Hi everyone, in this video we'll be talking about how to approach second year of medicine in DMSF. So I'm making this video basically to help you uh, uh, to help you understand how second year works, how how you should approach, how you preferably should approach each and every subject, how to study for exams and how to learn the subjects from books, PPT or whatever the resources that you're given, right? So most of you might feel uncomfortable that you're starting a very new, very new year with a lot of new subjects and you might be confused as to what to do, right? So this will basically serve as a guide for you. So you can you can follow whatever I say in this video and build on it as you experience second year. You can build your own methods, techniques and uh, and what whatever you learn during the uh, second year period. All right. So what I'd like to talk here is about the subjects first. So the second year medicines has these subjects. You have general pathology, pharmacology, microbiology slash parasitology. Para you will have it in second sem. Micro you will have it in first sem. ASM two clinical pathology, neuroscience in first sem, neuropsych, neuropsychiatry in second sem. Research two in sem one. And I heard that now surgery is added to sem one. And then pediatrics and obstetrics and gynecology in sem two. So. Here I've marked these four are the really, really important subjects and you will understand why it is really important as we go through this video. They are important because they have a huge application in your third year and your fourth year clinics, third year clinics and your fourth year clinics, right? So I would like you to focus mainly on these four subjects very much. All right. And then after that, these subjects come into picture and after that, these subjects come into picture. Now let's just break down each subject, what to expect, how to study, what are the references and uh, yeah. So let's start with GenPath. I've made a very detailed and specific video on how to approach GenPath for second year. I'll link the description. I'll link it in the description so you can refer to it. It's, it's about just 15 to 20 minutes. You can just refer to that video on how to study general pathology. Why I'm stressing on general pathology is because general pathology has a very high weightage. Let it be in DMSF exams, let it be in, in FMG, let it be in USMLE or whatever exams you're going to take. GenPath has a higher weightage compared to the other subjects of second year. And it's, and it's a difficult, relatively it's a difficult subject compared to the other uh, subjects of second year, right? So the first thing I want to say here is the uh, source of so the source that you need to refer for GenPath is your Robinson Cotterin's 10th edition Pathologic Basis of Disease. This is the book, all right? So if you want to know how to study this book, please go and watch the video I'm talking about how to read this book. I have explained it in a very detailed manner on how you should approach this book because for some people, this book might be too much from when you're transitioning from first year to second year. If you and you might just give up after uh, one or two weeks, but this is the best book that you can get. If you if you're able to read this book and if you're able to make notes out of it, definitely you can read any book in your third year for internal medicine, pediatrics or obstetrics and gynecology. Okay. So I just want to give a sum summary now on how to approach GenPath. So first for GenPath, always listen to lectures because if you're under Dr. Padilla and Dr. Ancheta's faculty, there are a lot of questions that have been asked from the lectures itself, which are not in the book and which are not in the PPT. So just take the PPT of the lecture when the lecture is going on and then mark the additional things and note down the additional things that Dr. Padilla and Dr. Ancheta says during the lecture. But for other faculties, the PPT and the tables and the green boxes and the blue boxes in the book will be fine. Okay, so these green boxes are the morphological features of the pathology that you're studying about. That's really important and direct questions come from the green boxes, which will be in the Robinson Contents book. And the blue boxes are the summary of every concept. So that's how you should read the book. You should do the tables, do the green boxes and the blue boxes. That will give you an idea on how to do the book. Once again, you can refer to the video in which I've explained how to read Robinson Contents. Right, so lectures, do the PPT, tables, green boxes and your blue boxes. Now there's obviously the lab part for GenPath. Many of you might find lab to be annoying, but lab also has a really good high weightage about 35 to 40% weightage. So make sure whenever there is a lab session before the lab session, the doctor is going to explain to you how a slide looks like. What are the features that are in a slide, just like histology. So listen to that lecture, take notes, take pictures of it, and then go to the lab, view the slides by yourself 
that's called slide viewing you view the slides by yourself you take pictures of the slides through the microscope and you annotate them by yourself see there are going to be a lot of annotations that are available from the seniors which have all the slides and everything marked perfectly but when you take the picture with your own phone through the microscope and when you put them in a pdf or a notepad and then you uh, annotate on top of it that's when you're going to remember the slide forever right so make sure you listen to the pre lab session take notes from it and make sure that you identify all those things in the microscope take a picture of it attach it to some note and then annotate all those slides okay that's what i want you to do for lab this will make life very easy for you so just refer to the annotations just before exam and refer to the seniors annotations too just before your exams now this is another very uh, less known book for robins that has all the questions okay that are taken from the robins paragraph itself so this is that book i'll link the description to the uh, i'll link the book in the description of this video so you can refer to it so once you're done with a chapter or a topic you can definitely go to this book and try solving some of the questions so so that your conceptual strength is uh, more or increased all right and then finally you also have to maintain a lab manual for genpath so for the lab manual you just make sure you uh, uh, make sure you write the lab manual as the topics are going by instead of waiting for the last minute to write everything so this will save a lot of time for you in the end because during term exams you need to study for the term exam and you will have a very high weightage and a lot of things to remember and you don't want lab manual to be another stress for you so make sure as one lab session gets over you sit and finish the uh, lab manual on that day in a in 15 or 20 minutes okay this is about genpath now once again if you want to know more about genpath and how to study specifically for genpath i'll link the video in description go and check that video out all right now pharmacology another very important subject the resource for pharmacology is goodman and gilman's pharmacology pharmacological basis of uh, therapeutics okay now this book can be too much okay that's why i'm going to tell you what are all the important uh, important things that you should extract out of this book so first let's start with the lecture okay most of the pharmacology lectures are really good and if you listen to the lecture half of your work is almost done okay so listen to the lecture and there will be around two or three topics in pharmacology taken every week okay so finish that topic in that day itself this will save you a lot of time and sub and the topics will not pile up in the end because pharmacology is something that you need to finish on that day and keep revising again and again so that you don't forget the drugs the mechanism of actions and all that make it a thing that regardless of whatever subject you study but for pharmacology for example if you have pharma class on wednesday and they take three or four chapters make sure you spend around 3 to 4 hours after that day and go finish those four chapters completely studying from the ppt and from the book now from the book what you need to study is you need to do the tables okay there are tables that have the drugs that have the uh, mechanism of action of the drug the class of drug the indication dosage side effects contraindication make sure you study that from the book all right now another important thing that i want to tell here for um, pharmacology is you need to maintain it's suggested that you maintain a mini book that has all the drugs you learn okay so that mini book can have this tabular format in that mini book put a table class of drug example the generic name the indication the mechanism of action the side effect contraindication and the dosage make a table like this in that mini book and for example if you come through an ace inhibitor uh, ace inhibitor so just you can mark it as ace inhibitor example you can put captopril when it is indicated what is the mechanism of ace inhibitor what are the side effects when is it contraindicated and what are the dosages different dosages for different age groups and different kind of indications right so indication is nothing but when is the drug indicated when you should give a drug in what kind of disease you should give a drug now if you take losartan or any angiotensin receptor blocker indication is for hypertension right so that is what is indication mechanism of action is how the drug works side effects are the side effects of the drug it's self explainable contraindication is when you should not administer drug for example in pregnant patients for example in patients with kidney failure or chronic kidney disease something like that okay and the dose now dose is not really important for important drugs make sure you memorize the dose but for the other drugs you can just ignore it so make a mini book whatever drug class of drug you learn every single time you study pharmacology make sure you note them down and this book is going to get filled up through your second year and it's going to be a lifesaver for you in third and fourth year 
you will be having a handbook of drugs and you will be able to answer any questions quickly by just referring to it okay and it's going to be really really useful since you're writing it it's going to be etched in your memory too okay please try to do this this will be a really good initiative from your side now what what is this mims so you have tbl in pharmacology team based learning just like you had it in biochemistry you will be having team based learning in pharmacology too so there is this website called uh, mims so this is the website called mims in this website you just have to go and type the name of the drug so let's just take losartan okay you type the name of the drug you search the drug and see you go you go inside a brand name and you have all the details that that you want about that specific drug so you can just go inside any drug see you can see its contents indication dosage contraindication special precautions adverse reactions the drug interactions the action everything and even how the drug appears and everything all the details about the drug is present in this website so whenever you come across a drug make sure you go to mims check out the information about the drug and fill out all these informations so for tbl mims is a really good source for you to go and uh, write in detail about these drugs because mims has every drug in the world and it has every single information about the uh, drugs that are available all right so it's a very valuable resource i'll leave the link to the mims website too in the description and finally make sure you learn how to do how to write a prescription through pharmacology because you'll be learning a lot of drugs and they'll be teaching you a skill on how to write a prescription make sure you learn this because this is going to be super helpful in third and fourth year all right these are the points i want to want you to remember about pharmacology two important points are when you have a lecture finish those topics in the same day that's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of piling up from pharmaco in pharmacology and finally the mini book that you need to put for all the drugs that you learn okay and also you can also use chat gpt to make mnemonics for drug let's say there are 10 drugs that you need to remember in a class of drugs or antibiotics just enter all those drugs in chat gpt and try to make a mnemonic out of it that's a good way to use artificial intelligence right so make use of mnemonics so that you remember all the drugs forever okay now let's talk about micro and para i'm not going to talk a lot about it because it's it's relatively it's a easier subjects but it's of very high significance because most of the diseases that we see in the real world are infectious diseases and they are because of microbiology and parasitology right so the first thing i would suggest is lecture listen to the lecture refer to the ppts memorize all the bacteria the mic the microbiological organisms the parasites use sketchy microbiology if you want to learn in a very funny and uh, good way make sure you listen in lab and then complete the lab manual too for micro and para this you can handle it by yourself right but but understand that this also has a really good weightage in all exams and real life application okay now this is the most underrated subject of second year asm2 because the skills you learn in asm2 are going to help you forever okay so asm2 has lecture and lab for lecture and lab both you should you should use this book bates as your reference because asm2 is going to teach you skills it's going to they are going to give you checklists like how to perform a specific type of examination like let's, let's say nervous system examination let's say uh, skin examination let's say upper limb examination or uh, uh, per rectal examination digital rectal examination so all those examinations the steps for to do the examination will be given to you as a checklist during your asm lab so before the lab let's say the lab is on wednesday tuesday you should make sure you memorize the checklist and practice that specific examination on a friend or a group mate okay and use bates as a reference to perfect your techniques techniques of examination they have step by step uh, uh, explanations to help you perfect all the examination techniques that you need okay so checklist prepare a day prepare at least a day ahead and then bates when you read bates to study for asm2 it's going to help you revise your anatomy and physiology too so that's a really good way of revising your basics in first year no apart from this you can also watch videos to understand how to do specific examinations like auscultation the ladder pattern or whatever you can watch a video for literally anything just on youtube you can search this examination so you can just follow the steps of the video too or whatever your preceptor recommends okay now some of the important things that you need to keep in mind while going for an asm lab is you have to develop patient communication because you will be doing the examination on your group mate 
ओके सो मेक श्योर योर कम्युनिकेशन इज रियली गुड द इंग्लिश इज गुड एंड यू मेक इट वेरी क्लियर एंड स्लो एंड स्टडी सो दैट द पेशेंट कैन अंडरस्टैंड एंड योर बॉडी लैंग्वेज डोंट बी पैसिव अबाउट योर बॉडी लैंग्वेज बी वेरी एक्टिव इन यूजिंग योर बॉडी लैंग्वेज मेमोराइज द चेकलिस्ट एंड स्टे टेक ऑल द इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स दैट आर नीडेड फॉर दैट स्पेसिफिक एग्जामिनेशन एंड कीप दम रेडी अ डे हेड okay now once you master asm2 and you learn all the essential examination techniques this is going to help you a lot during your clinics in third year and fourth year and you don't need to get back to revise when suddenly a doctor asks you to do a physical examination on a patient in the hospital in third year or fourth year you can just right away go ahead and do it and you can impress a doctor you can right away go and analyze that patient by doing the specific physical examination or taking the history okay so once you do that it's going to be super helpful for you so make sure you focus on asm22 especially the lab part okay the uh, demo part so now let's talk about the other remaining subjects very quickly clinical pathology is a really important subjects in which there are a lot of values that you need to remember like the hemoglobin the blood reports the cholesterol and all those values related stuff and uh, laboratory diagnosis tests related stuff is going stuff is going to be seen in clinical pathology so again listen to the lectures do the ppts there's this book called henry's where you can refer to all the tables and the values standard values make sure you memorize all these values because clinical path is a value game okay now what about neuroscience or neuropsychiatry neuroscience is sem 1 neuropsychiatry in sem 2 lecture ppt and listen to the class because this is a really interesting subject if you have noticed from neuroanatomy from first year neuroscience and neuropsychiatry is an interesting subject you will get through it if you just listen to the class and do the ppts and if you develop a little bit of interest towards it all right and what about research 2 so research 2 will be in sem 1 okay and then there will be prelims mid term and pre finals and compare so make sure you do the lecture you listen to the lecture do the ppt and apart from this for every term the entire term i have revised the research syllabus one by one okay for prelims for mid term and for pre finals they all cover all the topics that are taught in each term so once you do the lecture and the ppt make sure you go to my youtube video of there's a playlist for research playlist i'll leave the link in the description so make sure you go through the videos before your exam so it will give you an idea on how to attend the questions exactly and many people have found it really useful let's say from imd 28 27 26 and even in my batch imd 25 many people have found these videos to be useful and questions literally translate from this video itself in the exam but make sure you see this only after you have an idea from the ppt and the lecture of research okay this is another important subject because if you don't get through it you will not you will have to repeat the subject again later because it's a semester subject okay okay now finally the three other three minor subjects these are all not done in very detail in second year because you will be doing it in proper way in third year but the thing you need to remember for surgery it will be almost like revision of physiology for pediatrics it will be like a revision of biochem and the values in pedia there are a lot of values milestones when a child grows in certain ages and in obgyn it will be like a revision of female anatomy and female hormonal physiology and all that so just go to lecture ppt and go through the book these are the references okay so that is all i wanted to say about all the subjects now some final tips that i want to stress again for second year is pharmacology finish topics on the same day itself whenever they teach it make sure it's a habit for you to finish the topics on the same day spend more amount of time on genpath because that's a very heavy weight subjects and many people find it difficult find difficult to pass make sure you read the robins and cotrins textbook see the video that i've made on how to read robins and cotrins learn asm demos and checklists properly as i told it's going to be helpful in your clinics and finally focus equally on lab of genpath and micro because they have 35 to 40 percent weightage and they can pull down your marks very easily and they can also help you uh, push your marks higher all right so that's all these are all the tips i wanted to share for second year i hope this guide will serve as a valuable tool for you in second year i just want you to take idea from this build on this and make your own study methods and i hope you do uh, really well in second year thank you